Hello, and welcome to the Little Victorian Boy podcast. I'm TikTok storyteller and comedian Little Victorian Boy. This month's podcast is holiday-themed, so throw a Yule log on the fire, wrap yourself in a blanket with your cat, dog, or lizard, and sit back and enjoy the inaugural episode of the Little Victorian Boy podcast. One Christmas when I was a wee little Victorian boy, I awoke just at the break of dawn, eager to see what Santa had brought me. Not wishing to wake mother and father, I carefully snuck downstairs, tiptoeing in my socks, which were Fruit of the Looms Greg Kinnear's signature collection. Oh, does Greg Kinnear make a fine sock? The man knows comfort. And with the sweat-wicking power of Fruit of the Looms cotton nylon blend... Oh, what am I saying? You already know all of this. Let's get back to the story. Where was I? Ah, yes, sneaking downstairs to get a sneak peek at my presence, like a little sneak. And there they were, hung with such care, stockings for mother and father and my evil twin, Otto. Where was my stocking? Not hung on the mantle, but rather lying on the floor. And inside, something was moving. A rat, I thought. It must have climbed into my stocking and eaten all my Christmas treats. I carefully approached the stocking, and using the fire poker, I jabbed at the creature hidden inside. Oh! It yelped. I opened the stocking, and no rat did I see, not a rat at all, but a fat little naked baby about the size of my palm. Who are you? I asked. I am the Christmas cherub, said the wee naked child. Please help me. I am so cold. A Christmas cherub? I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, few have, said the Christmas cherub. We cherubs live in Santa's beard and eat the crumbs and cookies that fall from his lips. He keeps us warm with the hair from his face, and we keep his beard clean and free from waste. But without his neck warmth and sugar crumbs, I soon will die. Please, you must help me. Hold me by your neck and feed me cookies, for I do not wish to die. Not on Christmas, not on Christmas. Hold on, I said. Let me fetch you some cookies. I'll be right back. But I didn't go to the kitchen. No, I went straight to Father's library. Something in the way the little cherub spoke sent a chill down my spine, alerting me to some unseen danger. I entered Father's library, though he had forbidden me and Otto from going in there, probably due to his collection of maritime pornography. But I wasn't interested in that. Well, not at the moment, anyway. I had a specific book in mind. I carefully looked through the stacks and found it, the great book of Christmas creatures, a sort of encyclopedia of elves and reindeer, and of course, Santa himself. All the magical entities of Christmas are listed within. I looked through the index, and right above Christmas Chupacabra, I found it. Christmas Cherub, page 420. (laughs) Hell yeah. So I fingered my way to 420, and there it was, the Christmas Cherub, a.k.a. Santa scabies or Kringle crabs. The Christmas cherub is a Christmas parasite that lives in Santa's beard. The creature burrows its head into his neck skin and suckles on his sugary blood. On occasion, one will fall off and will immediately need to feed on sugar and seek a new host neck to burrow itself into. On a Santa, the cherubs are an itchy annoyance, but on a human, they are quite deadly. They will quickly suck the sugar from your blood, and since a person cannot possibly eat the quantity of sugar that a Santa can, you will soon die. Any attempt to remove the cherub will cause it to burrow deeper into the neck, gnawing through the trachea, esophagus, and eventually severing the spinal cord, killing the victim. If one encounters a Christmas cherub, do not attempt to feed it or let it get close to your neck, though it may try to trick you into doing so. One must promptly kill the creature. It cannot be killed through typical means, however, for it is immune to stabbing, smashing, drowning, and fire, but it is easily killed when brought in contact with the healthy sugars in fruit. Ah, that's it! I carefully placed the book back on the shelf and ran downstairs, stopping by the kitchen to grab a fresh orange. Oh, cherub, I have a nice cookie for you, I yelled. Oh, yes, please feed it to me and bring me your neck warmth. Yes, of course, you little parasite. And I threw the orange into the stocking. Ah, Screamed the cherub as its skin began to melt and fuse to the orange. Ah, wretched child. I'll eat your flesh. I'll gnaw through your spine and drink you dry. Ah. 
Ah! A red and green smoke rose out of the stocking as the chair began vibrating violently. <laughs> faster and faster and faster, and then pop! The cherub exploded like a kernel of popcorn into a lovely puff of Christmas cotton candy. And that, children, is why on Christmas it is tradition to always place an orange in one's stocking. Well, wasn't that a fun tale, and also informative? Now, before we begin our next story, I'd love to take a moment to talk about one of our sponsors, George Western University, now offering online degree programs in aeronautics, leprosy, and assorted crafts your mom likes. Find the online program that fits you at George Western, and if it doesn't exist, check again because they just added it. George Western, the university with all conceivable online degree programs. Now, this next tale is from a fellow podcaster and friend of the show, Ezra Cup. Ezra, take it away. The year was 1977. I was 10 years old, and like all children, that year I was obsessed with a particular film that had just debuted. It was a film with a young protagonist dressed into an epic adventure full of fun characters, futuristic technology, and loads of wacky puppets. I think you know which film I'm talking about. Eraserhead by David Lynch. The number one toy on every child's wish list was the head of Henry Spencer, the lead character played by Jack Nance. It's made with real erasers, I remember telling my mother as she boiled turnips for midday meal. So it's basically a school supply. It was no use. My mother was a practicing Rajneeshi. We didn't celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or any gift-giving holiday. Anytime I asked for something, she would just recite the Rajneesh Tenth Commandment. Do not search. That which is, is. Stop and see. It never made much sense to me, and honestly, still doesn't. The only Rajneesh commandment I really related to was the eighth. Do not swim. Float. But that only applies to sensory deprivation chambers. Since my mother wouldn't listen to reason, I thought I'd try parent number two. My father. He was sitting in his recliner and listening to jazz albums the way that white fathers listen to jazz, with a sort of jealous reverence. Why can't I play the horn like this man? He'd scream before returning to snapping his fingers softly and with no sound. Hello, Richard, I said. May I speak with you a moment? My father demanded we use his first name and hated the word dad. He said it was because he didn't trust palindromes. He said anything that is the same forwards as it is backwards is a liar. You know who this is? He asked. Yeah, it's Dizzy Gillespie. Hey, Richard, I asked mom, uh, mother, if I could have this cool new eraser head action figure and she told me to ask you. You see, palindromes aren't the only liars. What is it? Eraser head? He a boner? N- no, he's, he's not a trombone player. It's a head made out of erasers, shaped to look like the actor Jack Nance. It's cool. You know, I thought about being the head of a big band back in the day, before the sander took my pinkies. It was useless. I knew where this conversation led. Eventually, everything always came back to jazz with my father. Best case scenario, I'd end up listening to him lecture me about Miles Davis. Worst case, he'd be forcing me and my sisters to start a Thelonious Monk tribute band, which he would conduct. He'd name it something stupid like Thelonious Hunks and make us all start working out and then scream at us for having weak child bodies and not muscle hunk bodies that fit the theme. I left him to his diz and sat down next to my sister, Janice. She was drawing pictures in bright cyan Crayola, pictures of horses without legs. You see, my sister Janice had been kicked in the throat by a horse when she was six, and ever since then, she drew these pictures. A child psychiatrist said it was her way of taking her power back, so my parents encouraged her. This particular horse was a legless Clydesdale, laying next to a set of stairs leading to heaven, and a slide leading to hell. If the beast got no legs, they can't get into the kingdom of God, screamed Janice. Oh, uh, that's nice. Uh, hey, are you using those pencils by any chance? I have as much use for them as a horse without legs has for shoes. I took the pencils and left Janice. If I couldn't get my parents to buy me an eraser head head, I'd make one myself. I spent all Christmas break gluing erasers together and carving and shaping them into the likeness of Jack Nance. It took everything out of me. I kept looking at the head and it just didn't seem right. Maybe a little off here or a little off there. I kept carving and shaving. By the end of the break, my eraser head head was whittled down to a freakish shape. The monstrosity of my own creation. I couldn't stand to look at it. It made me sick. This constant reminder of my own failure was a hideous mistake. Or perhaps I was the mistake, as it was an eraser. 
I was confused and unsettled and honestly pretty bored with the whole project, so I threw it away and haven't spoken about it until today. But looking back, I have a new perspective. The point of an action figure is to allow a child to put themselves in the experience of their favorite character. And creating my eraser head, this monstrosity that haunted my dreams, that's exactly what Henry Spencer felt in the film. So I guess you could say my eraser head was better than anything you could buy in a store. And that's why this is my favorite holiday memory. I'm Ezra Cup, and you've been listening to me talk. Please don't leave me. That was Ezra Cup, and this has been the Little Victorian Boy Podcast. It was our very first episode, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please share it with your friends and follow me on TikTok at Little Victorian Boy for more original stories. Thank you so much and have a happy holiday and I'll see you in the new year with our next episode of the Little Victorian Boy podcast. <laughs>